Good day, y'all. Today, I have a box of decants that I want to smell and talk about and share my thoughts with you. But to be honest, I was like, that's just so boring. Smelling fragrances and just talking about them. Can we not spice this up a bit? And that's when I had the genius idea. Cup, but not just any cup, wine filled cup. Yes, folks, I will be talking about these scents and rating them while drinking. Is this a good idea? I don't know, you're gonna have to tell me after this is already uploaded. I'm sure I will find out once I edit this. Because I am an incredibly refined individual, of course I will be drinking a Pinot Grigio from uh, Yolumba Winemakers. I don't know, it's from South Australia. <coughs> All right, are you guys ready for this ASMR? Whoa, is that too much? Oh my God, duh. That's like a third of the bottle. Okay, I'm not gonna drink all of that. I'm just gonna start with the one that I'm most excited for. Let's just front load all of the dopamine for this video, okay? First, I'm gonna be smelling Bianco Latte by Giardini di Toscana. This one I've been seeing everywhere. Like, it keeps popping up in my Instagram feed. And that is like, if you want to sell me something, just, put it on Instagram. For some reason, the stuff I see on Instagram really sticks with me. I even somehow convinced myself that I needed plant medicine. That's another video. Thank you to actually one of my viewers left on my favorites video for 2023. This was her, one of her favorite fragrances. So I'm about to judge you so hard right now. So this has caramel, coumarin and honey, and vanilla and white musk. So I'm expecting this to be very rich and sweet and deep. Oh, <sighs> gotta follow the rules, guys. <laughs> I'm already having fun. <coughs> that wasn't the fragrance, I swear to God, I had like a, a little tickle. Okay, this is amazing. Okay, it kind of, okay, I'm not gonna lie though, it kind of, like, it kind of smells like a vanilla candle. Like, it kind of smells like what I would expect, like, a Yankee candle to smell like. Like, maybe one that was a vanilla something. It is really good though. I can see why people really like this one. It is a very warm, comforting vanilla. It is quite sweet, but it's made really smooth. I think the musk in here is, does, really does a good job of smoothing it out. To me, it's not overly sweet. Oh, I wonder, I bet this would be really lovely layered with warm vanilla sugar by Bath and Body Works. This is beautiful. There is like a, cr there's like a creamy milkiness to it almost, which maybe that's what they were going for. I mean, latte is in the name. Oh my God, wait, this is so, you know what? I could definitely see myself wearing this at bedtime. I would definitely wear this if I was having like a really cozy night in or really intimate gathering and just being really close with someone like more of an intimate setting that's when i would wear this this is very comforting calming cozy it's really good i can definitely see why people like this i don't know if it's one i would wear outside the house maybe during the winter for sure i think more during the winter obviously i wouldn't really wear this right now while it's so warm it is very beautiful it is kind of candly like it does remind me of a candle. That doesn't mean it's bad though. It's very beautiful. It's very creamy, milky. The caramel, it doesn't have too much powderiness. I find that sometimes with caramel, it has, it gets a bit of like a powderiness, which isn't bad, but this is a definitely a rich caramel note in here. This is very beautiful. I love this. I get the hype now. Okay, I get it. Oh, it's very good. This is very good. Okay, yes, I like this one. Bianco Latte, this is a good one. I have a lot of vanilla heavy fragrances in this one. I don't know if I was doing that purposefully, but a lot of popular fragrances last year were vanilla, are still vanilla. So I feel like it can't be helped. The next decant I have is Animalique by Byredo. This one, I was very intrigued by the leather and violet combination. I really like violet and I've been looking for something like, um, like a sexy feminine leather. So I'm very curious to smell this one. Oh, <laughs> have another sip. That's the rule that I just made up. Hello? It's getting on my finger. Ooh. I'm sorry, I, it's getting on my finger. I have to smell my finger now. I'm really sorry, you guys. This looks kind of vile. Okay, it's not a feminine leather, but it's a very likable leather. It's a bit powdery of a leather. It's a bit cold. It's not It's not a deep, warm, sensual leather. It's actually quite bright. I didn't even read out the notes. So in this one, you've got you've got lemon in the top, you've got mimosa in the middle along with the violet. 
and then you've got tobacco. You've got suede and tobacco in the base. That's what I'm picking up. I'm definitely picking up the tobacco. It's like a very aromatic tobacco. So this isn't, I wouldn't say it's like a warm fragrance. It's kind of a, a cool, it's a bright leather. It's almost kind of refreshing in a way with the lemon. And I think there's, there is a little bit of greenness. I think it's the mimosa note adding that. Yeah, it's like a bright, fresh leather. Oh, well, not a fresh leather, but you know what I mean. And like an aromatic tobacco. Um, Listen, maybe not for me. I would definitely layer it. Well, you know what? I uh, Would I wear this? Probably not. I probably wouldn't wear it personally. I would love to smell it on someone else. Oh, right. So I actually picked up a decant of Angel Elixir by Mugler. Now I've smelled this one before, although it was in the middle of like a Christmas rush. I had smelled, I don't know, 200 other fragrances that day. And I don't really remember what it smells like. So I was like, why don't I just order a decant so I can remember? Okay, so in Angel Elixir, you've got pink pepper at the top. Ooh. I don't remember that. You've got jasmine, lang lang, sandalwood, and orange blossom in the middle. And then in the dry down, you've got bourbon, vanilla, and amber extreme, which looks to be a synthetic note. Assuming Fragrantica has the notes correct, which they often do not. Um, but I get, I get the vibe, all right? I'm getting the vibe. Mmm. I, you know what? I like the pink pepper in this. I think it's the combination of the pink pepper and the orange blossom. The orange blossom in this is just, it's hitting just right. It's perfect. That orange blossom in there is perfect. How did they do it? It's nice and crisp. And the pink pepper isn't too bitter or over overpowering. It complements the orange blossom. It just complements the the bright, slight tart citrusiness that's an orange blossom. Oh, okay. I remember why I liked this. This one slaps. Now I'm. It's it's coming back to me now. This one freaking slaps. This is like this is full bottle worthy. A hundred percent, without a doubt. And. It's worth mentioning, it's been a long time since I've smelled the original Alien. I do, sorry, Alien? Angel. It's been a long time since I've smelled the original Angel. I do know that I don't like it, or from what I can remember, I don't like the original Angel. This seems like a far cry from the original Angel. Oh, this is so girly. This is like super girly with that orange blossom, that nice, bright, crisp orange blossom. This is really good. I'm shitting over this one, you guys. This is, I gotta get a bottle of this. Yeah, that's a good one. And now I remember why I liked it so much. It definitely stood out in my brain. I just couldn't remember why. The next one I have is a musk heavy scent. This is Riv Rivulets by Pleasing. I hope I'm saying the name right. Rivulets, Rivulets. I don't know why I decided to get this one. I just thought it looked interesting. It's got black pepper and brett in the top. Oh, now I know why I picked it. It's got ambrette in the top. Love ambrette. It's got lemon in the top as well. Middle note of linen. I'm assuming this is accurate on Fragantica. Girl, please don't let me down. Base note of ambroxan and musk. Okay, this should be interesting. I'm very, oh. I know you guys are just waiting for me to get messy, you scoundrels. Oh, okay. Ooh, this is very fresh and clean. The black pepper against the musk gives it a very, fr it gives it like a freshness for sure. It gives it a really unique freshness. I feel like ambrette isn't necessarily a standout note sometimes. It just helps create fluffiness. And it's definitely doing that in here. The lemon is also not too overpowering. I actually quite like the lemon in here. It's not like commanding attention in this scent, which I love. I feel like the star players in here are actually are, are really the black pepper, the linen, and the musk, and it's beautiful. I can see myself wearing this on a cozy day, lounging at home, maybe to the gym. This is beautiful. I actually really like this one. I I really like it. It's very comforting. It's not like your your grandpa's musk. You know what I mean? This is a very fresh, modern musk. I really like this. Good one, this is a good one. Now we're scooting on into Killian territory. So the next one that I picked up is Smoking Hot by Killian. Oh no, I'm already starting to feel the, the drunkies. Ah, I just hit my mic. Why did I pick this one? I'm trying to remind myself. Um, I think it was the smoke. The smoke I think is what um, drew me in. 
with this one. It's got tobacco and moss. That I think must have been why I picked this. It's got smoke, it's got tobacco, and it's got moss. I really love what moss can do in a scent. It gives a really beautiful, like, sweet earthiness. So I love moss for that, and I think I was very intrigued by the combination of that and the smoke. So you've got apple, cinnamon, smoke in the top, got tobacco and moss, like I mentioned, and then in the base you've got bourbon, vanilla, and orchinox. Synthetic substitute for ambergris. Let's spray. My face feels hot, guys. I don't drink very often. Oh. Oh, it's all over my fing my finger. It's like it smells like a burnt apple, kind of. Hold on, I'm having I'm having trouble. I don't know if I like this one. It's almost it's almost coming across like anise like a really smoky anise, which I'm guessing must be the combination of the cinnamon and the smoke, but it kind of smells like a burnt licorice. I feel like it, okay, I'm undecided on this one. There's not one thing that is like standing out as smelling bad. It's just that I don't know if I like the combination of the notes in here. Cause you're not, the smoke is not like, oh, it's like an incense. It's like a sweet burning thing. No, it's it's just like straight up smoke, like like a cigarette almost. Like this smells like an ex-boyfriend from high school that was definitely not a good influence. You know what I mean? Mm, I'm undecided on this one. I might I don't know. I might need to actually test it and wear it. It's hard for me to picture myself wearing this one as of now though. Okay, I'm undecided on this one. Maybe I may or may not circle back if I remember. Oh no, I don't think I did. Did I do a drink before that? All right, the next one I picked up is Tutu by Gritty. Like, what are we doing the Gritty? No, stop. Why did I pick this one? <laughs> you know what? That's a great question because I'm looking at the notes here and going, there is literally nothing intriguing about these notes for me. So I may have also been drunk when I did this order, to be honest. You've got coconut in the top with apple and grapefruit and cassis. Okay, I do like cassis. For the floral bouquet, you've got heliotrope, jasmine, and rose. In the base, you've got raspberry, musk, vanilla, amber. So you've got raspberry in the base. Okay. Hmm. Is that why I picked this? All right. Uh, how do I feel about tutti grudy? Oh, I just sprayed not the splutter. Okay, um, smells a bit juvenile, to be honest. It's, it's okay. It's almost got like an aquatic quality almost, like with the combination of these fruits. Mm, mm, hold on. I, I think the raspberry is doing something odd in this. I don't know if I like, it's, the sweetness is like a lot, kind of. Well, it's young, okay, it's, it's okay, it's it's young, it's not a love. I do smell the coconut a little bit. Listen, it's not that bad, all right? I am I do get the raspberry very strongly. I feel like this is, this is a very simple, young, it's kind of, it almost has like an aquatic, like a watery quality. I feel like the florals are pretty well blended. Maybe the rose sticks out a little bit more to me. I like it. Would I personally wear it? Maybe not. It could be great for summer though. So I'll give it a shot. I don't know. Maybe I'm undecided. It's not a love. I'm still unsure about that raspberry note in there. I'm, I don't know about it. I played the violin for many years and I haven't done this motion in so long. If you know, you know. Okay, so the next one I picked up is Royal Incense by Oman Luxury. Why did I pick this one? It's got incense. I think that is basically the only reason why I picked it, if I'm being completely honest. I think the base notes captivated me. You've got, in the base, you've got incense, honey, amber, leather, vetiver, cedar, and musk. For the florals, you've got geranium and lily. You do have pink pepper in the top. Obviously, it didn't let that stop me this time. Um, I think it was the base notes that intrigued me. So, um, how does this smell? Hopefully like royalty. Lizzie in a box. Uh, no. No, I don't like the floral. It's, um, the, the floral, it's a bit dated to me. The scent story in this is a bit, oh yeah, mm-mm. No, 
The combination of the incense and the honey, no, I don't think I like this one. It's a bit, if you like vintage-esque scents, you might like this one. So actually, Lizzie in a box, this is perfect for you. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. I this is this is a I do not like it. Someone might like it out there, Lizzie, my girl, but this is not for me. The scent story is a bit dated for me. All right, now let's reel it in. Let's come back to the vanillas now that I feel like maybe hopefully my nose has recovered. So the next one I grabbed is Occident à la vanille. Accident à la vanille. <laughs> by Jacette. Is it that how you say it? Jacette Parfums? To be honest, I picked this one because I think my my mom messaged me about it and she was like, I really want to get this one. And I was like, oh, okay, um, let me look at it. It's got vanilla throughout it. It's basically just vanilla. It's, you got vanilla in the top, vanilla in the heart, vanilla in the dry down with some sandalwood and some Styrax. Styrax is just tree. It just gives a balsamic quality to it. I would expect this to blow my vanilla tits off. Also, this was a very expensive decant, all right? It was probably the most expensive one in this lot. Oh, it smells like popcorn. <gasps> Ooh, it smells... <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm saying this so much? We have been so, you know what? We have been so spoiled with vanilla everything. Like vanilla isn't everything. It is so funny how I will smell vanilla in a fragrance and associate it with a candle that I've smelled in my life. Like legit, this smells like a vanilla candle that I have out in my living room that I used like a couple of days ago. It kind of, it's giving that like popcorn-y kind of smell. You know what I mean? Like a kettle corn-esque vanilla. It's yummy, it's incredibly gourmand. Like this is very edible. Hell yeah, I'd wear this to the movies for sure. <laughs> Ooh, it's like a buttery, salty. <laughs> I'm just thinking of popcorn. Guys, it smells like kettle corn. Do I wanna smell like this though? I would like to smell it like in my house, like as a, as a scent, like a spray or a candle. It's divine. Do I wanna smell like this though? I don't know, but it smells really good. It just reminds me of a candle. Like I swear to you, Yankee Candle has something that smells just like this. It smells really good though. One that I would definitely wear in the holidays. Maybe it's a bit too rich for anything else. Holidays, this is perfect. Family gathering, Christmas, Thanksgiving. This is a nice, cozy, creamy vanilla that smells like kettle corn. I guarantee someone will smell you and think you smell like kettle corn or a candle. <laughs> but it smells good. I don't mean that as an insult, right? Candles smell good. I mean, that, that's what they're for. Come on, what are we doing? All right, how are we doing? Ooh, we are doing well. My dopamine could not be higher in this very moment. Wait, I'm gonna text my mom. Sorry, my mom's VIP, so she gets to hear what I think before anyone else. What was I saying? All right, so the next one, these are literally all vanilla. I swear I did not do this on purpose. They are like, almost all of them are vanilla heavy. I am so sorry. Am I sorry though? Okay, so the next one I picked up is Happy Dust by Narcotica. That sounds like something else. Why did I pick this one? So in this one, you've got bourbon vanilla. So you've got vanilla all throughout. You've got mango, coconut water, mate in the top. In the heart, you've got matcha tea, brown sugar, jasmine. And then the dry down, you've got a mishmash in there. You've got vanilla, tonka, sandalwood, musk, Peru balsam. I think I just looked at this and was like, what, th what is that? <laughs> what even is this? Mate and matcha tea. Okay, I want this to be very calming. Calming and soft. Maybe that's why it's called happy dust, but I, that's not what I think of when I say, when I, wait, I didn't do a drink. Ah! There we go, on my hand. We're spraying it on my hand. I'm looking at the other notes in this and I'm going, listen, you look at all the notes and you go, what the frick is going on here? They're all just very much supporting actors for the vanilla. The vanilla is the star of the show. I would say the other notes add a little bit of a freshness, a little bit of a greenness. It's a an airy vanilla. This might be my favorite vanilla so far. I think this is my favorite vanilla so far. It's a, it's like a light, 
airy, dusty vanilla. Okay, is it, hold on. I don't know if it's my favorite. Hold on, do not erase, the, just scratch that. It's very good. Okay, I'm not gonna say it's my favorite. It is very good. This is a very good vanilla. I can see why it's called Happy Dust. It's not a deep, warm, comforting vanilla, although it is, there is a comforting aspect. It's just, it's very, it's very likable. It's very mass appealing. It's very easily digestible kind of vanilla, in my opinion. This is an easy vanilla to like. If you like vanilla, you will like this. I think anyone would like this. This is really good, you guys. I love this one. I love it. It's a very, very good vanilla. I recommend it. I just realized I haven't been saying if it's full bottle worthy. Yeah, I would say it's full bottle worthy for sure. I don't know what was happening. I honestly, I blacked out when I bought these. So if I'm trying to recall what I was thinking during the process of purchasing these, it's all a fabrication because I honestly, it's just a black hole in my memory. Vani Antique by Byredo. In this one, you've got plum and musk in the top. You've got white wood and labdanum, vanilla, amber in the base. So very simple scent story here, it looks like. I'm not getting nervous about the plum in this because this is Byredo we're talking about. It's not like a, you know, a cheap celebrity scent, no offense. Love my cheapies, but this is not that. Oh, I didn't take a drink. I only have a little bit left. Okay very musky. This should just be called musk antique. To be honest, the vanilla is not as strong as the musk. So I guess I get the name, Vanille Antique. If you put vanilla in a in a dusty attic, that like your great grandpa, he sadly passed away, tragic rest in peace, and your family went over to his house and you went up into that attic and it was just like dusty and there's like books everywhere and boxes of random stuff. You smelled a random fragrance and it's just like labeled vanilla or something, and you smelled it. It's been sitting there for so long. That's what this would smell like. Your great grandpa's old vanilla fragrance that's been sitting in like a dusty environment. Even though I know, I know that's not what it would smell like, but just, just work with me here with my train of thought, okay? Just, you need to immerse yourself. I would wear this to like a library or something. This is like if dark academia were a fragrance. That's what this smells like to me. So imagine the aesthetic, the style, dark academia. You've got like a vest, you've got a white blouse, a button up blouse on, you've got like plaid, like tan and brown plaid pants, and you've got a nice brown leather belt with like brown leather boots or something. This is what you would smell like. You would smell like this. It's good, I like it. I, I actually, I really like this one. Maybe it's not necessarily my style. You know what? I don't know if I'd say that. This could be my style, God damn it. I I really like this one. You know what, I'm, I'm saying it. All right, the cat's out of the bag. This is, I love this one. This is full bottle worthy. I love it. This makes me feel intelligent, just smelling it. I feel scholarly. I feel educated. Does that make sense? Probably not. Next scent we have is by Ex Nilo. It's In Paradise, Rivi In Paradise Riviera. So this one I didn't pick but it was a little freebie. So you've got bergamot in the top. You've got peony, ooh, uh, tiare flower and tuberose. In the base, you've got cashmere in, ooh. This is intriguing, interesting. You've got lots of florals with cashmere in. Oh, wow. This is very springtime. This is like very springtime like a freshy springtime scent. It's nothing crazy unique. I feel like I've smelled something similar to this before. I wish that the tuberose was more forward. I'm getting a lot of peony. I don't love peony. I don't mind it in this, but it is very quite forward. So it is a very bright peony tiara flower. There is a bit of tuberose in there. It's not super strong to me and it is cozy. It's got a little bit of a coziness in the base, got that cashmere in, but it's still quite fresh. It's a very fresh spring scent. Very fresh floral. I don't mind it. I think this is a, you know what? This is a really great wedding fragrance. If you are invited to a wedding, I would say I, I would have a different list of scents for like the bride of a wedding. But if you're like just an attendee or bridesmaid, this is a beautiful fragrance. I think this is really perfect for uh, attending weddings. It's not a love, but it is very good. And that's saying a lot considering there's a very strong peony facet in there. So coming for me, that means a lot. Last but certainly not least, Nebris by Latafa. Oh, 
Why did I pick this one up? Well, I think it's quite obvious. It's a very hyped fragrance. It's sold out everywhere. Cannot find it here in Australia. I sought it out because I do like Eilish, but the I, I've tested it out. I don't own Eilish, but I've tested it and I know the longevity is not great. So I wanted to find something similar, but stronger. And Nebris was something that came up a lot as a kind of like a dupe. So in the top, you've got red berries, mandarin orange, you've got cacao, rose, vanilla, and in the base, you've got a sugary tonka bean amber musk. Let's see what the hype is all about. I'm actually, you know what? I'm gonna spray this one on the skin just because it's the very last one. What could go wrong? Oh my God, that was a huge spray. I'm drowning. Why is it minty? I'm not saying it's bad. It's just unexpected. It's like a sweet mintiness. Like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, what are those, like a thin mint. It smells like a thin mint. Why does it smell minty? <laughs> oh, it's kind of, okay. Now that it, now that it's drying down, it's getting warm. It's getting warmer. I'm getting more of the cacao. I wish I had like a small size or a sample of Eilish I could immediately compare it to. I'm sure millions of people have done those comparisons on YouTube anyway. It does kind of remind me of it. I don't love the initial spray. It's kind of giving mint, like thin mint. Not necessarily a bad thing, but just not what I'm looking for. But as it's drying down, it's getting better. Okay, the cacao is now more coming out. The rose isn't too intrusive. There's a little bit of a floral component for the rose, but it's not too intrusive. Okay, I like it. Um, Unfortunately, the bottles that I'm seeing online for Nebris in Australia, they're like $90. Um, I wouldn't pay $90 for that. Then you're talking, it's literally then more expensive than Billie Eilish. And I would just go and buy Billie Eilish because it's a lot cheaper here. I like it. Listen, I I, I like it. The, the more it's drying down, the better it's getting. I'm curious to see how it wears. I think that is where it would kind of be like the deciding factor if I like this more than Eilish is the longevity, which I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, um, I don't know, maybe I'll end up buying a 10 mil of Eilish and just, you know, see how I go. That's all of them. I did it, you guys. You know what? This wine's pretty good. I'm not usually a pea kind of girl. I hope this was useful. <laughs> was this entertaining? <sighs> I feel like this video sucks. <laughs> all right, well, I don't really know how to do an outro at this point, so, um, See ya.